Greetings everyone, I'm Karen Jane Casey and this is Abundant Living with Karen. The purpose of this podcast is to help us to share the good news of Jesus, where there's hope for us, especially having a heart for the lost and for the needy, while we all struggle in a world of chaos. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but Jesus came that we may have life and to have it more abundantly. Please be assured that during this 20-minute episode, we will not be lecturing down to anyone. I will not be yelling at, uh, uh, preaching at anyone. Rather, I share what I've learned and what I'm still learning in my journey and, and what's on my heart through experience and the Word of God. We learn together. I welcome you to share what you learn. You can always contact me at KarenJaneCasey.com. C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. And your testimony is important, and someone does need to hear it. Let's start out by praying together. Dear Heavenly Father, King of the universe, because your loving kindness is better than life, our lips will praise you. You are our strength and our refuge in times of trouble. We, live, we are filled with gratitude and humility at the miracles that you work in our lives. We cast our cares on you. We fear no evil because you are always with us. We pray faithfully and we strive to obey you. We ask you to save, heal, and protect our loved ones, our acquaintances, friends, community, our, even our country, and our enemies because we know with God all things are possible. And we believe that you answer all of our petitions in your perfect will and in your perfect timing. Please forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lord, help us in our life's journey and help us to be more and more like Jesus. Thank you for your love, compassion, and mercy. Your grace is through Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. So today's episode title is Together is the Plan. Before we get into it, I'll be sharing scriptural references, so you might want to get a pen and paper ready just so you can jot them down. I was on a retreat with other Christian women last month, and it was great. We all wanted to learn more about ourselves and about each other, such as our personality traits, our likes, our dislikes, our strengths and our weaknesses, and so forth. We wanted to know more about each other because we work on projects together, and we want to maximize our talents, our abilities, our gifts, and as well as ensure that we're with the best, effect, the best effective way, use of money, time, and resources. We also wanted to prevent conflicts among us. God had plans for each of us, even before we were in the womb. He gave each of us a unique set of qualities, specific gifts, talents, and abilities. Instead of one person having it all, or all of us having it all, we therefore need each other to get the task done and to do it well. When we all work together, then the resources should be complete and complementary to each other. Together we can accomplish great things, where if a project happened with only one person, it wouldn't. This was in God's plan. Together is the plan. Let's look at Psalms 133, 133 verse 1. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Just as the body has several members with different functions, so is the body of Christ, the church, the community of believers. When the community of believers has each person participating fully with their God-given purpose, then together we are all like a well-oiled machine. We can do all things, each within our specific purpose and calling, through Christ who strengthens us. Does the community need leaders, those in service, healers, administrators, teachers, preachers, givers, 
Yes, they're all needed. Just as our physical body, physical body needs each part to function properly or the whole body suffers. Do you remember that silly joke on the internet about the importance of body parts? Probably not, it's very, very old. But anyway, various parts of the body were arguing with each other on who was the most important. The head, because it held the brain, the, it was the mainframe. The hands and feet had a say since they brought on the motion, the stomach for digestion, then the heart, and so on. And as they came to an agreement on who was the most important, the rectum, the lowliest in rank, out of, prote out of protest, shut down. So very quickly, the other body parts realized that very important point. Each is important in its own way and function and it was made for a specific purpose. Let's look at Romans 12, verse four through five. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one member members one of another. When someone, like in a community, or even a small group with a project ahead, when someone chooses not to do their function, the entire group suffers. Sometimes people can put forth great effort and training to actually perform a function that they were not designed for. And they may be somewhat successful at it, but it's hard work because that's not what they were designed for. I feel like I've been a living example of that in some ways. For instance, I work very, very hard to become accomplished with the mandolin. I even took lessons and I had a dream of playing to entertain others. So I had the dream, I had the training, I had the desire, but after much time, energy, money that I had put out into that and hard work, I, could, I came to the realization that, you know what, my ability, regardless of the efforts I put in, could only go but so far. I simply had not been given that talent. Always when tackling any task that requires more than one person, we need to work together and combine what we have individually, what we can offer to it. Not everyone will be able to lead, counsel, serve, organize, raise funds, advertise, and so on. It takes a team. It takes an army. God planned it that way. We're supposed to be dependent on him as our good shepherd and then to help each other, being interdependent, not on our own or independent. And how do I know that? Am I just spouting out an opinion? Let's turn to Matthew 22, verses 37 through 39. And this is the message that Jesus himself said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. How can we love our neighbor if we don't interact with them? How can we help those in need if we don't know what they need? And if we don't apply our own abilities, talents, skills, and gifts that we have? What were we given these gifts for? To only better and serve ourselves? No. How can we accomplish the Great Commission if we only serve ourselves? Let's turn to Matthew 28, verse 19 through 20. Jesus himself again, sharing with his, his disciples the Great Commission. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. We share the gospel of Jesus, the good news with others. We serve the Lord when we serve others. When we make the effort to really see and hear, pay attention to the person when we're communicating with them, we are fully present in the moment with them, and that's when we can truly appreciate their uniqueness, we can appreciate their differences and similarities. 
develop a relationship with the common love of Jesus, we become a community of believers. With this sensitivity applied, we can better understand each other and have patience. How difficult is it to discover, to notice, for instance, that a person is quiet and reserved and humble, as opposed to the outgoing, confident person? One appears to be well equipped to lead, while the other may be uncomfortable doing that, but maybe they would be happy to go behind the scenes and do, do all kinds of service. Both are very much needed though, and, and that is like each and every one of us. We are all very much needed in everything that we do. So um, when quality time with people can enable us to bring out the best of each other, sometimes a person is not aware when left to their own devices where their talent might be, what their calling or purpose is, we are most happy once we know what our purpose is because we are already well equipped for it. So like playing the mandolin, it was very hard for me. That should have been a clue to me that that was not what I was designed for. When a project with a person, when on a project with a person very different from yourself, instead of butting heads or feeling conflicts, we can take a look at each other and enjoy the differences in each other. For example, if a task-oriented person finds their partner is very people-minded and not so concerned about the meeting, meeting the deadline, the scheduling, but, but what's important to them is to enjoy it. Well, can we do? Well, how about if we allow that extra time in the budget? and peacefully enjoy the task at hand, learning a few things along the way. I walked away from that retreat with some knowledge. First, my awareness of how important it is to God, our Creator, that we, His children, not only live among each other in peace, but, but that we also are living in unity and love with our brothers and sisters in Christ, even to the point to consider others even in humility, as better than ourselves. We even find power when we pray together. Matthew 18, 20, Jesus said, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Jesus came to serve God and willingly sacrificed for people. He is our ultimate example. We're here to serve the Lord and to serve people. Being together with other people is the plan. An exception to this, and there's always exceptions, because we have free will, I know from experience that on occasion we may find ourselves among those difficult people who do not want to have peace, they are full of negatives, and they are mean-spirited. But we're warned about that in 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Essentially, not to keep company with people like that who may mislead us and corrupt our good character. We strive to get along with everyone and we love everyone to pray with them, but we also want to guard our hearts and minds to prevent us from being influenced by evil. Let's see some scriptures that encourage unity within the community of believers, the church. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 12 through 28. I'm not going to read all that. The Apostle Paul spoke to the church, giving them various instructions regarding the community. He encouraged them to work together in peace, with warnings of the unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, and have patience toward all, not taking revenge of evil against anyone. We're encouraged to congregate together as in church to worship and praise God. We perform communion together in remembrance of what Jesus has done for us. In Hebrews 10 verse 24 and 25, we're told not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And in 1 Peter 3 verse 8, we're encouraged to be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, 
Love as brethren, be pitiful, and be courteous. Well, besides learning more about the importance it is to God that we have loving relationships together and knowing that it's part of his plan, I also learned something about myself. I'm changing. As I travel along my Christian walk, as we all do, we go from glory to glory. We are God's work in process. He is the potter and we are the clay as he molds us. I see this in myself. At one time, while I was suffering domestic violence, and even during my recovery, I was negative in my thinking, lacked confidence. I was fearful, and I avoided developing relationships with people. I was not really believing in their love response. Now I am filled with faith, not fear. I have confidence, even boldness, to declare that I am a daughter of the Most High King the creator of the universe. I am his work of art, unique in how he has formed me and for my purpose. He is love and he pours his love into me as his vessel and I share it with others. And I'm still in the growing process. I know that. I may not be yet where I'm, I want to be along the journey, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. Do you know who you are in Jesus? I always like to encourage listeners to accept Jesus if they've not done so already. It's the most important decision in our lives. It's literally a matter of life and death. And here are some powerful scriptures. John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This describes God's ultimate unconditional love for us. John 14, 6, Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus alone can make a difference in each of our lives, and each person must make that personal decision on their own because we have free will. In Romans 10, 9, we learn that when we confess that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God and, we, and who came to pay for our sins and we, be, we believe in our heart that Jesus defeated death, then we're saved. Whether we've already accepted Jesus or not, let's pray this together. Dear Jesus, I know that you are the Son of God and that you came to earth to suffer on the cross for me, for my sins, and you arose from the dead. Jesus, I am hopeless without you. I'm a sinner, and I ask you now to forgive me of all my sins. I repent of them, and I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you made that decision today and you pray this prayer with me, believing and accepting Jesus, then you're saved. Born again, you have become a believer. I want to encourage you as you travel your own Christian walk. There may be detours and potholes along the way, but quickly call out to God for help. He is our refuge and strength in times of trouble. Follow Jesus in all you do. Study the word of God. Obey and praise the Lord and enjoy the abundance in his calling, his purpose for your life. Having faith triggers our love of the Lord. Let's look at Romans 8, verse 28, and that brings us to a summary of this topic. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. As we all love the Lord individually and in fellowship relationships with other believers, all things do work together for good according to God's plan. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast today or this episode in Turn to God with Karen. And I pray that we all, you and me, are encouraged and better equipped as we continue our journey. The meek the humble shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. 
This is Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, domestic violence advocate, and ambassador for Christ. Stay tuned for Turn to God with Karen every Monday morning at 6.30 and Abundant Living with Karen every Tuesday morning at 7. Both are in the morning and at Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. You can download and listen anytime. Also, you can Google these podcasts by name and see the listing. Both podcasts are with Storm Talk 365 Radio. We're available on iTunes, Twitter, and Alexa on Amazon, and hosted by iHeartRadio and Spotify. My website, KarenJaneCasey.com, C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. I would sincerely love to hear from you. Any suggestions, feedback at all is welcome. Please contact me and share your experience with this episode. Maybe you would like to share your story. Maybe you would like to share a message to listeners through my podcast. Again, my website is KarenJaneCasey.com. So before closing, I want to share with you my favorite nonprofit, and that's Yeshua's House. It's spelled Y-E-S-H-U-A. And Yeshua is the Hebrew name for Jesus. Yeshua's House is a faith-based, 18-month safe haven for women and their children coming from domestic violence and financial hardship. And as you know, I'm a domestic violence advocate, and I've been on the board of directors with Yeshua's House for over three years. And I also help facilitate some of the classes, support classes. So, as I indicated earlier, Yeshua's House is nonprofit, and they depend on donations. All gifts are tax deductible, and they're in most need of monthly pledge donations. Checks can be sent to Yeshua's House, Post Office Box 143, Petersburg, Virginia, zip code 23836. No, 23804. Or you can donate to the website yeshuashouse.net, and that would be through PayPal. The founder, Angela Brown, can be contacted directly, yeshuashouse2, the number 2, refuge at gmail.com. yeshuashouse2refuge at gmail.com. Or you can simply call 804-605-3841. My voice shall you hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning, I will direct my prayer to you and will look up. Thank you and God bless.